Hi, today I'm going to talk about how I selected the colors from my multi-layer mandala, how I laser cut it and assembled it. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And in my last episode, I showed how I used Adobe Illustrator to design this custom multi-layer mandala. Today I want to talk about how I use that design to audition different color combinations before actually selecting the ones I wanted to use in the real thing. And then I'm going to talk about some things I learned, some techniques I used for painting the boards, for masking before laser cutting, also for applying adhesive before laser cutting, and then final assembly. So I'm going to cover all of that in this episode. The first thing I want to do is to pick out the colors before I even have to buy the paint. And I can do that using the design I created in Illustrator. Illustrator has an entire library you can access of different color swatches. They're grouped into categories like skin tones or metal or nature, so you can just explore these and see if they have any colors that you like. Of course, if you already have some paint that you want to use, you can just look for swatches that are similar to the colors that you already have. Or use the color tools to create your own. To use swatches, you select a layer, and then you do Control A to select everything, and go to the stroke color here. You get a drop down, and you can pick the color that you want to turn that stroke to. And then just as I showed in the design video, you always want to lock the layer that you're leaving and unlock the layer you're going to, turn the visibility on, select it so you make changes there. And then you do Control A and pick a color for your next layer. I was experimenting here with colors based on using wood stains. So I was looking for swatches that matched wood stains I already owned. But after playing around with it a bit, I decided I didn't really like that, so I wanted to do something more colorful. So I looked for some saturated colors and found a couple of palettes I thought were interesting. And then you double click on the folder in the front and it puts those colors up into the colors available to you for the stroke color change. So now I have some new colorful options. I don't actually own that paint yet, but I know I can go out and buy it. So now I'm going to go through that same process again. I'm going to pick a layer. I'm going to unlock it, make it visible. I select the stroke color and then I pick something out of the palette below to change it. I'm also changing the background color fill. I'm not just looking for pleasing combinations, I'm looking for visibility as well. I want every level to show up. I can use the color picker to create a completely custom version of a color. Maybe I like it, I just want a lighter shade of it. Or I can use this color panel to quickly click around and see what the impact is. After a lot of experimenting, this is the color palette I selected, and it's actually quite different from what I had in mind originally. Now that I know my colors, now I have to actually make it, and this is actually a very challenging project. I want to paint the top, but I do not want to paint the cut edges. Even with my airbrush, I won't be able to get into all these little nooks and crannies. It'll also be hard to glue it up because it's going to take a long time to apply the glue and some of it's going to leak out from under the edges. So I decided to try to paint and apply adhesive before I cut. So here's my first attempt at doing that. This is the paint I bought. It's basic craft acrylic paint with a matte finish. I bought 12 inch wide painter's tape on Amazon. The description says it's suitable for laser cutters. I bought extra tacky adhesive sheets that have white paper on each side and just a clear uh, layer of adhesive in the middle. Here are my boards still drying. I did a light sanding first and I let these dry for 48 hours before applying the masking. Applying 12 inch wide masking tape can be tricky. So here I use these four inch granite samples. And if you watch my videos, you know I use these for everything in my shop. The tape is sticky side up, I put the board face down, and then I trim off the excess. 
The adhesive sheets are even easier and after this first one I went ahead and cut the second sheet in half before applying it and that made it easier yet. But I still have to trim off the excess. The last step is to label it because it's so covered I can't tell which color it is so I don't want to mess that up. It took me about a half hour to do all four boards. I want to talk a little bit about why I used masking tape instead of transfer tape. When I've tried transfer tape in the past, it has peeled up during the laser cutting. And because it's paper, that becomes a real fire hazard in your laser cutter. I've had better adhesion from masking tape, and it's true in this case as well. I had very little separation of the tape from the wood during the cutting. The problem I experienced was from the masking tape sticking too well. Even with the sanding and having it on a very short amount of time, it pulled up these little bits of wood as I peeled it away. By the time I got to the top board with all of its detail, it was almost impossible to remove the tape. I think the heat from the cutting has really changed the nature of the adhesive on the masking. Not only was it hard to peel off, you could not get it off your fingers after you peeled it off. It peeled off paint and it also left a sticky residue on the board. Next time I'm going to do a better job of sanding, I'm going to use gloss instead of matte paint. And I'm also going to experiment with different brands of masking tape. My adhesive experiment, however, went much better. Assembly was remarkably easy. I used my granite samples to create a corner jig to help with alignment. And I removed the paper, which comes off quite easily from the back. And then I just drop the next layer into place and press down to make sure it's firmly attached. And this adhesive really sticks together well. But you only have one shot to get it properly aligned. It's not movable like it would be with glue. And here's a comparison of the illustrator picture versus the actual result. It really gives you an accurate representation of what you can expect. I feel like I was about 75% successful in my attempt here, and I learned a lot by doing it. I could have gotten out my paintbrush and touched up the problems that I had here, but really this was an exercise for this video, and I like it just the way it is. For me, part of the fun of making is to learn new things and to get better and better. My next couple of videos are going to be game related, so if you're interested in seeing those, please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to turn on notifications.